Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to discuss about inductors. Similar to a resistor or to a capacitor, an inductor is also a passive component. Basically, an inductor is a device temporarily stores energy in the form of magnetic field. Inductors are usually a coils of wire. And one of the basic properties of electromagnetism is that when we have current flow through a wire, you create a small magnetic field around it. So we coil up a lot of wire, we will get a stronger magnetic field. When current first starts flow through the coil, the magnetic field starts to expand and then stabilizes. And then you got some energy stored in the magnetic field. When current stops flowing, the magnetic field starts to collapse and the magnetic energy gets turned back into electrical energy. So it's a kind of like temporary storage area for energy. You know how a capacitor store energy in the form of a static charge and resist sudden changes in the voltage. Well, inductors are very similar. They store energy in the form of magnetic field and resist sudden changes in the current. Remember one thing, the current in the inductor cannot instantly change. It always lags a certain amount of time. When a metal wire is wound in a circular manner, we got an inductor. The symbol of the inductor is shown here. It's represented by L and its unit is Henry. In practical cases, we use small units of Henry's like milli Henry or micro Henry because Henry is a large unit. Before moving forward, we need to understand what is inductance. Inductance is the ability of an inductor to store energy and it does this in the magnetic field that is created by the flow of electrical current. The basic concept is Energy is required to set up a magnetic field and this energy needs to be released when the field falls. As a result of the magnetic field associated with the current flow, inductors generate an opposing voltage proportional to the rate of change in the current in the circuit. Inductance is caused by the magnetic field generated by the electric currents flowing within an electrical circuit. Typically, coils of wires are used as a coil increases the coupling of the magnetic field and increases the effect. There are two ways in which inductance is used. Maybe you are familiar with that. Self-inductance and mutual inductance. First, self-inductance. Self-inductance is the property of a circuit, often a coil, whereby a change in the current causes a change in voltage in that circuit due to the magnetic effect of caused by the current flow. It can be seen that self-inductance applies to a single circuit. In other words, it's an inductance typically within a single coil. This effect is used in single coils or chocks. The next one is mutual inductance. Mutual inductance is an inductive effect where a change in current in one circuit causes a change in voltage across the second circuit as a result of magnetic field that links the both the circuit. This effect is used in transformers. Likewise, if the two coils are further apart from each other or at different angles, the amount of induced magnetic flux from the first coil into the second will be weaker producing a much smaller induced EMF and therefore a much smaller mutual inductance value. So the effect of mutual inductance is very much dependent upon the relative positions or spacing of the two coils. Types of inductors. Depending on the application, there are many types of inductors. They come in various form factors. There are high frequency inductors, low frequency power line inductors, and some specially designed inductors for decoupling or filter applications. We are going to discuss different types of inductors in details. First one is air core inductor. Air core inductors are those that do not use a magnetic core made of ferromagnetic material. They have coils wound on plastic or ceramic or other non-magnetic cores, like those filled with air. Generally, ceramic core inductors are referred as air core inductors. You may be confused with the statement. If the core is a ceramic, why it's called as an air core inductor? I will tell you when I explain the construction part of the air core inductor. Okay. Ceramic is the most commonly used material for inductor cores. Ceramic has a very low thermal coefficient of expansion. So even for a range of operation temperature, the stability of the inductors inductance is high. Since ceramic has no magnetic properties, there is no increase in the permeability value due to the core of the material. The main advantage of the inductors is very low core losses and high quality factor. Quality factor or a Q factor is an important term we need to be understand. The Q value is a parameter that indicates the quality of an inductor. We know that coils easily pass direct current, but 
act as a resistor to alternating current. This behavior is called inductive reactance. The higher the frequency of the alternating current, the higher the inductive reactance. However, although the coil is a conductor, the wire winding has certain resistant components. The ratio between the resistant components and the frequency dependent inductance is called as loss factor. And its inverse number is the Q value. Because F is the frequency of the current flowing through the coil, the Q value will differ according to the frequency. In simple terms, a higher Q value means lower losses and a better suitability for use a high frequency inductor. Construction For making an air core inductor, we need to take a cylindrical material of specific diameter, for example a drill bit, as a template. We can wrap around the length of wire to make an air core inductor. Once it winded properly, we can remove the material we used as a template. Then now air will act as a core. If you use thin wire to make a small inductor, those wires don't have that much stability to attain the coil shape. So we use non-conducting materials like plastic or ceramic as template to hold the wire. I will tell you an example. Instead of drill bit I used earlier, now I use a small piece of pipe to make an inductor. Wire is wounded around the pipe and it works as an inductor. The hollow part of the pipe is now filled with air. There is no effect of that pipe in the working of the inductor. So we can call it as an air core inductor. The inductance can be stabilized by dipping the inductor in varnish or securing it by wax-like materials. Here the core material is air, so it has low permeability, hence lower inductance. So it can be used for high frequency applications. In the application part, it is used for constructing radio frequency tuning coils, filter circuits and high frequency applications including TV and radio receivers. When we are talking about the benefits of the air core inductors, there is no worries of saturation. Inductors with the ferromagnetic coil become saturated and the current is increased, but the same is not the case with the air core inductor. It has no core to saturate and it is independent of the electrical currents. And the next one is easy to operate at high frequency. The most important benefit of the air core inductor is that it can operate on the high frequency level of 1 GHz. It gives the best performance if the intensity is on the peak. Another type of inductor is iron core inductor. The inductance value on the air core inductor depends on the number of turns, length, diameter, thickness of the spiral, etc. The air core inductance ranges values are limited. Uh, in order to increase the inductance value of an inductor, an iron core is placed inside it. So an iron core inductor is used. In other words, it's a fixed value inductor in which the iron core is kept between the coils. The iron core inductor is used in the filter circuit for smoothing out the ripple voltage. It is also used as a chalk in fluorescent tube light, in industrial power supplies and inverter systems, etc. The next type of inductor is ferrite core inductor. It is a fixed value inductor which have a ferrite core placed inside the coils are known as ferrite core inductor. The air core inductors and iron core inductors having a low inductance value, limited frequency operation and more losses. By using ferrite core instead of iron core, these problems can be overcome. So the construction part is somewhat similar to the iron core inductor. So I will explain the construction part here. Instead of the ferrite core, we used iron core in the iron core inductor. By winding a length of wire around a ferrite core will be result in the ferrite core inductor. So what is a ferrite core? Mixing iron oxide in combination with other metal oxides like magnesium, zinc at a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius to 1300 degrees Celsius will result in a material with a very interesting magnetic properties called ferrite. Ferrite core inductors have high permeability, high electrical resistivity and low eddy current losses. These characters make them suitable for many high frequency applications. Mainly these types of inductors are used in high and medium frequencies. It is used in switching circuits, pi filters, etc. Next one is toroidal core inductor. Toroidal core inductors are high performers among inductors. They offer the smallest size and lower electromagnetic interference. Their windings cool better because of the proportionally larger surface area. A 360 degree wound toroidal transformer has a high degree of symmetry. Its geometry leads to near complete magnetic field cancellation outside of its coil. Hence, the toroidal inductor has less electromagnetic interference when compared against other inductors of equal power rating. Windings that are less than 360 degree exhibit more electromagnetic interferences. In the construction part, a length of wire is wrapped around a donut shaped core is commonly known as toroid core inductor. The core material is ferrite, 
So the material properties resembles a ferrite core in texture. This type of core can contain a magnetic field very well because of its closed loop nature, this improving the size and inductance. Due to the high magnetic field and high inductance value with fewer windings, the impedance is very less, which helps to improve the efficiency of the inductor. The main applications are medical devices, uh, switching regulators, industrial controllers, output filters in SMBS, etc. Next we have shield surface mount inductor. Uh, this one is not mentioned in your manual uh, but this one is widely used in the modern circuits it's built by winding a length of wire in a cylindrical bobbin and securing it in a specially made ferrite housing forms so these types of uh, inductors are called as shielded surface mount inductor these inductors are specially designed for pcb mounted applications and the shielding is there to reduce the electromagnetic interference and noise from the inductor and also to be able to use at high uh, density design mainly the, these types are used in very large scale and lot of applications are there we can see that in our laptops desktops server applications and we can see that in low profile and high current power supplies battery powered devices uh, dc to dc converters uh, etc next we are moving to the variable type of inductors it's formed by moving the magnetic core in and outside of the inductor windings. By this magnetic core, we can adjust the inductance value. When we consider a ferrite core inductor by moving its core inside and outside, on which the coil is wanted, variable ferrite core inductor can be formed. These types of inductors are used in radio and high frequency applications where the tuning is required. These inductors are typically ranged from 10 microhenry to 100 microhenry. And in present days, these are ranged from 10 nano henry to 100 milli henry. In the previous video, we seen the properties of the capacitor. And now in this video, we saw the properties of inductors. So I will explain some difference between the capacitor and inductors. Basically, capacitor stores energy in the form of electric field, where inductor stores the energy in the form of magnetic field. Uh, there is no flow of current through the capacitor plates, but in inductor, current passes through the coil. And capacitor act as an insulator for DC current where inductor act as a conductor for DC current. And next point is in an AC circuit for capacitor the current leads voltage by 90 degrees and in case of inductor current lacks voltage of 90 degree. And the capacitor resists the change in voltage whereas inductor resists the change in current. Hope you understand the basics of inductors, inductance and some other points. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.